Hey guys, how are we doing? Welcome to Walking Boxing. It is Monday, September the 2nd, 2024. And uh, it's my final video uh, for a couple of weeks anyway, um, as I uh, head off tomorrow morning. Uh, first thing tomorrow, I'll be going to the airport. So looking forward to that, getting over to the US for a couple of weeks. Uh, for all the uh, the sightseeing and the Canelo Belunga fight, so again, I'll keep you uh, up to date with everything going on over there. Uh, thank you also to get started from from everyone who uh, sent me messages and uh, comments about uh, my, my video yesterday with the, my trips to Vegas and my experiences over there, but also some of your experiences. Uh, there's a few people that, you know, from England who let me know all about their fights over there. There's a couple of people that have been to Japan. So uh, I would love to do that, uh, especially something like the Joshua and Dubois fight coming up uh, in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, 96,000 people expected at Wembley Stadium. So how good is that going to be? Uh, I think, would they have 44, 45,000 or something at the Inaway fight? So, uh, or they'll expect it again on, uh, well, is it tomorrow night, actually, Tuesday night. So, yeah, I would love to do that. Uh, geez, who knows, that the dream fight could be next year, Fury and uh, Joshua. Imagine going to that fight in England, it would just be absolutely nuts. And uh, similar, uh, uh, Nao Inouye and Junto Nakatani, they would be definitely worth uh, the money to go over and watch those fights. So you never know, maybe I'll get over there, forego one of my trips to the States and uh, and go over to either England or Japan or not so sure about Saudi Arabia, but you never know, you never know. It's not really high on my, on my, um, my uh, bucket list, but uh, you never know. Um, the big fights are happening over in Saudi, so we'll see what happens there. Just uh, on that fight, so that's, yeah, that's tomorrow night with uh, TJ Doney, isn't it? So. Not quite sure, well, I was just going to say, I'm not quite sure how that fight ends up. I think I'm pretty sure we we, uh, we know how it ends up. I actually got our good mate Michael Tamura is over there at the moment. He manages TJ Doan here. So one thing about Mike, uh, Mike, he never puts his fights in, uh, or fighters, in fighters that he doesn't think they, they can't win or have a good shot at. So you never know what to expect, but geez, you'd, ex you'd think that uh, no, in a way, gets the job done in pretty devastating fashion. Um, but again, all the best to Mike and TJ over there. And uh, yeah, difficult task. Was there going to be 40 odd thousand people over there in front of the, so it's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty tough task, but good on him for taking the fight. I uh, like the fact that Naira in, Naira in a way keeps busy as well. So um, so I'll, I don't think I'll get, actually get to see that because I'll be probably on a plane. But anyway, we'll see what happens. I'll be looking at the results when, uh, when I get off the plane. Um, also, I saw that uh, Tommy Mercury, the trainer of Tommy Brown. So this, this situation with Michael Zarafa still hasn't died down. He actually did an interview and he's not very, uh, let's say, complimentary of Team Zarafa. And it'd be interesting, one thing that, that was a little bit disturbing is he said he would probably finish up from um, boxing uh, as a trainer because of this, which I, I hope is not the case. It would be a real shame. Uh, he has had a, an illness, Tommy Mercury. I can't remember, was, a, was it a form of leukemia or something? I don't, don't quite mean, I'm not sure. So apologies if I've got that wrong, but um, he has issues where he bruises very easily. Um, he doesn't, I don't think his blood recovers properly or something like that anyway. Uh, so again, forgive me if I've got it wrong. I just sort of read the article yesterday, um, but it would be a real shame if he did retire from boxing. Let's hope he does it, uh, Dan Hennessy, and reconsiders, and he's the announcer, by the way, who got the scores wrong uh, on the world title uh, fight on the Cambosis Lomachenko car. We all love Lieutenant Dan. So let's hope he does uh, Lieutenant Dan and just reconsiders and come, comes back, because he's been involved in the boxing game for a long, long time. But uh, uh, it, look, it would have affected him. He was uh, accused by some as being the instigator in the whole thing. I don't think that was the, the case. Look, he, he probably didn't really need to, and I, I know I've gone over this before, by the way, but uh, I, I know he didn't really need to follow Michael and sort of look to be pushing him back to his corner. But I think when it's been a highly emotional fight or a build up to the fight, 
and uh, Michael comes across and pretty much uh, gets in his face and yells and calls him a quitter and a dog and everything else. Uh, you probably can't begrudge uh, Tommy for saying, just Tommy McCurry, um, for telling him that there's a time and a place and, and to back off. And uh, it wasn't good. It wasn't a good look for, for, for anyone, obviously. And then, of course, Jason Zarafa, his brother, Michael's brother, who has been uh, barred. So. Uh, yeah, so if you haven't seen the uh, article, check it out. I think I saw it on the Herald Sun website, but I'm sure it's in other publications around the country. But not very nice words being said from Tommy McCurry about Team Zarafa. He thinks the whole team should be barred. I don't think we should go that far. Um, but certainly um, there probably needs to be some, some words uh, mentioned to the team about uh, maybe behaving themselves a little bit better at these events. So, But it has made us keep talking about it, what, five days after the event. So. Uh, what do they say? Um, any news is good news. But uh, yeah, so that was, that was a good read. And uh, and if he does look step away, all the best to Tommy. He's been one of the stalwarts of Australian boxing for a long time. So um, um, so be best of luck to him if that is the case. And we'll see if another chapter plays out in this whole Michael Zarafa uh, situation. Uh, one thing I didn't actually mention either the other day um, uh, in my videos, the Hall of Fame uh, was on on the weekend. And I was, uh, I was pretty pissed because I couldn't get there. I've been to the last two or three, I think. And it's an awesome night. And I saw that Danny Green was inducted and Angelo De Carlo as a non-participant was uh, inducted and, and numerous. So I saw uh, the legend of Australian commentary or announcing Howard Lee, uh, the voice, in my opinion, of Australian boxing for the last probably 40 or 50 years. I mean, this guy is an absolute treasure to Australian boxing uh, circles. He's a character. Um, I remember when I, was, when I was boxing, he used to call me the Kangaroo Flat Flash, even though I wasn't from Kangaroo Flat. Um, he was actually born in Birchip, Victoria, where I was born from. So we had a little bit of a connection. He always used to or, or, uh, ask me about it or, or discuss it or mention it or whatever it might be. Uh, but I still remember him um, with, who can forget the iconic Lester Ellis one kill you moment when he, when they lifted Lester up in the air and, you know, when he said then that, um, you know, when, it, well, when he announced the new champion. So I, I still remember that as a, what, a 10 year old or something. That's how much it, uh, it meant to me at the time. But just a true legend. Um, it did it did have a bit of a scare earlier in the year when it was announced that uh, he'd actually died. Uh, he, he took uh, um, great pleasure in, in uh, announcing that he was, was in fact still still with us. But that's just the character uh, he is. And yeah, I'm really, really happy for uh, my old teammate, Danny Green. Uh, I haven't sort of spoken to him for a while, probably for about six or seven years, I reckon, since I've spoken to Danny, but uh, well-deserved uh, from him. I must admit, when I first saw him uh, um, make the team, the Australian team, this is the amateur team that is, I had my doubts whether he'd make it. He was very, very raw. Um, not the most skilled guy in the world, but geez, he had things that you just can't teach. He had that tenacity, power, poise, timing. Um, not the most graceful guy, but geez, he just always managed to get the job done. Had a, had a massive heart, always backed himself against um, no matter who it was he got in there with. So uh, well deserved to, to Danny, Grant, uh, Danny Green. And uh, also saw that the, Jeff Fennick was there this year. He wasn't there last year, so uh, always great to see him there. Barry Michael and, and uh, so many others. So it's a, it's a really good night. And uh, again, I was pretty pissed I didn't get to, to go there. But if you ever do get the opportunity, go on the night. I mean, it's, it supports uh, the Hall of Fame. It's not that expensive to go either. I can't remember exactly how much it is, but you get a dinner and uh, drinks and, um, you know, you get to rub shoulders with the uh, royalty of Australian boxing. And uh, it's a really, really good night. So uh, to, congratulations to everyone um, that was inducted. I, and again, I, I, um, I did mention, it, mention An, uh, Angelo De Carlo. Really good to see him get a mention as well, because he's one of those good guys of Australian boxing that it's probably cost him a lot of money to support uh, his shows over the years. He's worked hard. He's obviously got a very successful business uh, outside of boxing, um, but he, uh, he always put on regular shows, always paid the fight as well. Um, you know, always had good sponsorship involved. So, uh, and he's worked tirelessly over a long, long time. So all the best to Angelo De Carlo, as well as uh, everyone else that was on uh, the bill that night. I can't remember, was it Kevin Kelly? I think might've been on there. I'm not quite sure, but again, apologies. Um, if, I've, if I've sort of missed uh, anyone, but last year was great too. Uh, Skinny Hussain, I think the year before that was his brother Hussain Hussain. 
Um, so anyway, it's a, it's a good night and congratulations to, uh, to all concerned. Uh, the other thing I saw, uh, I see uh, is Terence Crawford has given up his WBA belt. Uh, I think we all obviously knew that was going to happen. Uh, and, and it got sort of me thinking, uh, the welterweight division now, is there hope for it going forward that we might just see a bit of a resurgence? I saw that, so who are the champions? We've got uh, Barrios is WBC, Norman is the WBO, uh, Boot Tennis is the IBF, and Staniosis is now the WBA champion. So I was thinking if uh, Ryan Garcia moves up, maybe, De uh, maybe Devin Haney moves up, maybe Tiafimo Lopez moves up, could we sort of start to see the welterweight division really just start to thaw a little bit? I mean, it's been just a bit of a wasteland for the last couple of years since, uh, well, Crawford and Spence haven't done a lot. I know they fought each other, but not a lot has sort of happened uh, outside those two. And who knows what uh, Spence is doing? Uh, he's obviously going to go to 154 or beyond, or maybe, or not anything, who knows? But, um, and Crawford's obviously now 154, but I think there might be a little bit of hope there. Um, but just, I think, especially if Garcia and, and Haney move up, we might be, uh, or the welterweight division might be back in the game. So, just got Neil tangled up here. Um, yeah, so we'll, we'll see what happens there, but I think there's still some good fights to be made. I know there was a little bit of frustration from Eddie Hearn in the last sort of week or so. He wanted to uh, get Boot Dennis and uh, Brian Norman together. I don't think that fight's happening. I think Norman might actually be scheduled to fight someone else from, uh, from memory now. Uh, Hearn gave up on that fight. But anyway, the fact that they're all talking, let's hope we maybe get some of those fights down the track. Um, and I really hope that Barrios doesn't fight Pacquiao, although that seems to be the case. All just about uh, probably money. Or I'm not sure, but I'm not sure why, why you'd want to fight a uh, what a nearly 50-year-old Manny Pacquiao. Uh, was he 47 or six or something? So anyway. Uh, and finally, I saw on the weekend that uh, Diego Pacheco had a good win. Uh, that body shot and stoppage of Selecki. He's now putting his hands up to fight maybe Canelo Alvarez. From what I've seen. I think he's a fair bit away from being uh, in Canelo's league, although it doesn't seem to matter these days. As long as you're sort of ranked um, highly enough somewhat and you've got some sort of appeal, it looks like that Canelo will, will give you a crack. Um, so, yeah, as I said, I just don't think from what I've seen he, uh, he should give Canelo much trouble. But you've got to, you've got to do what you've got to do. Put yourself out there and uh, keep winning. And, uh, and then maybe a shot will come. But uh, apart from that, when you think about it, there's not really a lot left for Canelo. And that's why I've said all along that the Crawford fight does make sense. And it's getting louder and louder that Crawford's saying it's Canelo or nothing. So, and at the start, I must admit, I was like, okay, Terence, okay, just put, keep putting it out there. We know if it doesn't happen, you'll go back to 154 and fight some of the guys there. I'm not so sure anymore. Um, I really have got, got a feeling that it could be uh, curtains for Crawford if, uh, t if, if uh, the Canelo fight doesn't come around. So, but uh, yeah, so, and apart from Crawford, who else is there for Canelo to fight? Apart from, of course, the usual suspects, Benavides and maybe Morel. But I don't think those fights are going to happen. I know Bivol and Better Beaver have been mentioned, but I don't think Craw uh, Canelo wants any part of those guys. So. Yeah, it'd be interesting if he's only got sort of two or three fights left. I think actually with Canelo, it might be three or four fights, I would think, before he might look to hang the gloves up. So you need a dance partner. You need to set yourself up financially for the rest of your life. So um, stranger things have happened. So we will keep an eye on that one. So guys, look, I think that is, uh, that is it. Oh, one, actually one last thing. Uh, we did mention, uh, mention George Cambosis the other day. I think it has been uh, officially, well not officially, but it has been announced that William Zepeda will fight Tevin Farmer in Saudi Arabia on November 16, which rules out uh, Cambosis, which is what, uh, or he was mentioned as a possible other opponent for Zepeda. So again, now it probably really uh, makes maybe that Lopez rematch uh, a lot more viable, I think now, or a lot more sort of believable. So we'll keep an eye on that over the next few days as well. But guys, that is it for today. Uh, as I said, this will be it for a couple of weeks. Uh, I'm heading off first thing in the morning. So again, keep your eyes on the channel because I will be uh, putting up daily videos, daily vlogs of, uh, of what I'm up to. And uh, we'll just see what other things we can 
uh, C and, and that over there and I'll keep you all as updated as I can. So uh, guys, have a great day. Thanks again to everyone that tunes in every day and watches uh, uh, these videos. Uh, it means a lot and uh, helps the channel grow and creates more content, all that sort of stuff. So uh, we will see you in a couple of weeks. Have a good one.